or everything was fine clear no question well uh, if there are no questions now today we will be talking about uh, uh, atomic vibrations uh, uh, in this unit actually this is a next i mean this is the same unit but the next chapter of uh, uh, this unit <laughs> Uh, in this unit, we will be talking about uh, 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 atomic vibrations. So, in previous unit, we talked about uh, uh, continuum model, where the material was considered to be a whole continuous distribution of mass. And uh, then, uh, after that, uh, we discussed about the nature of bondings in uh, different types of crystals and uh, four main kind of bondings were discussed uh, ionic bonding metallic bonding uh, covalent bonding and uh, ionic covalent metallic and van der waal bonding and then that was there was a, another kind of bonding which was a hydrogen bonding uh, which mainly is because of ionic interaction or coulomb interaction but since it is specific to the hydrogen so it is discussed as a separate kind of bonding now, having discussed the uh, kind of bondings which are possible among atoms in a crystal or in any material in general, uh, now we will be trying to understand uh, what can these bondings or how these bondings are related to different properties. And one such property is uh, bond distance, of course, which we saw yesterday. Another thing which is related to the bonding is or the nature of bonding or uh, we should say uh, characteristics of the uh, atomic bonds is also something called atomic vibrations so in uh, oh some people are trying to join sorry <clears throat> okay so uh, in this unit we will be talking of what is what are atomic vibrations or how we can understand vibrations of uh, the atoms around their mean position so basically the physical concept is something like uh, what we have done in our uh, unit on crystal structure or our first unit that atoms in a crystal are uh, uh, present or sitting at well-defined positions right and uh, then those positions are decided by the, uh, of course, uh, uh, kind of uh, bond uh, uh, bond formation which is there in the particular solid. And atom would like to rest at the position when there is uh, no net force on the atoms uh, because of any neighboring atoms. So that is sort of you can call the equilibrium distance between the atoms is the bond distance or uh, that is the uh, separation between the atoms where they would like to sit. Uh, now, uh, the atoms can be seen to be uh, similar to that of uh, masses attached to a spring. Why so? I mean, mass can be considered to be, sorry, the, the, the bond can be considered to be like a spring. So what happens when uh, we have suppose uh, one mass attached to a spring which is fixed at one end um, uh, to suppose a rigid support then what will happen the mass will actually be resting at some equilibrium position uh, which is actually related to what is the length of the spring so mass will be resting at a particular equilibrium position now uh, okay now when we try to distort that mass or dis disturb that mass from its equilibrium position what will happen uh, it will again try to come back to its equilibrium position right and because of that the mass can actually mass do actually exhibit uh, uh, some oscillations simple harmonic oscillations uh, i'm sure you all are aware of that right now what is similarity of this system with the our uh, atoms in the bonds so atoms actually uh, whenever they are present in a solid so they are actually sitting at a, some specific uh, separation from each other which is of course the bond distance and if you try to uh, pull any two atoms close to each other i hope you remember that uh, potential energy curve 
where uh, there was a minima in that curve and uh, okay i can maybe go quickly try to show up that no since i have learned this thing from rahul so so that's the kind of potential energy curve right which we had seen um where this is your uh, uh, sorry energy axis this is your separation between the atoms um so i mean there is a minima right where the two atoms actually are sitting uh and this is the separation between two atoms now when you try to push the atoms close to each other means when you try to decrease this uh, separation between the atoms the energy will shoot up right means there will be a strong repulsion and that's something similar to that of a spring right when you try to compress the spring the mass will be um, uh, pushed back to uh, its equilibrium position on the other hand if you try to uh, pull the atoms apart from each other so because of that bond formation which has happened between the atoms the two atoms will try to actually come close to each other and on equilibrium they will be sitting on a specific separation which is related to the bond distance now um um uh, since so so atoms can't be resting at their equilibrium position i mean there is nothing like a rigid um uh, bond approximation uh, there is nothing like rigid bond i mean um, it's not that okay they will be fixed to or atom will be fixed to this particular position so what can happen is that because of uh, many effects like you can uh, expect uh, atom to gain energy from say temperature uh, because of the thermal vibrations even at a very low temperature or even absolute zero there will be something called quantum oscillations right so atoms will keep on vibrating about their mean position so because of those vibrations there are certain properties which are um related to these vibrations there are many pop properties indeed um for example um, uh, conductivity electrical conductivity thermal conductivity all these things has something to do with atomic vibrations as well um uh, uh, specific heat thermal properties all those are related to atomic vibrations <laughs> so in present unit actually we are trying to understand a solid and uh, made up of atoms and those atoms are vibrating uh, and are bound together by a some bond and that bond acts like a spring so we will be using uh, newtonian equations of motion here and we want to understand these atomic vibrations uh, um, i think i need to remove this thing how don't know just a minute huh? let me again come back to this okay so uh, so this this is representing a particular uh, direction in a crystal so in a crystal uh, in a practical uh, three dimensional crystal what can happen you pick any direction then along that direction there will be some specific separation between the atomic planes for example in simple cubic 100 direction the planes are separated by a distance a the lattice constant right if you talk about 110 direction then you can find out d interplanar spacing along 110 direction i think you have done that d is equal to um, uh, i think a over under root of h square plus k square plus l square that was the kind of expression you had done right so so now here we are assuming a specific direction along which waves are propagating uh, or atomic vibrations are uh, being studied and uh, what this is representing propagation of longitudinal waves along this specific direction now how these waves can propagate or uh, now you will ask okay that uh, we did propagation of waves in the previous case as well right yes in previous case or in previous few classes we discussed propagation of waves in crystals for example cubic crystal but with there the situation was different the situation was different in a sense that there we didn't talk about 
the detailed nature of uh, a bonding between the atoms we talked or did the whole analysis in terms of those elastic constants <laughs> now how are those elastic constants coming from the uh, what you can call uh, uh, interatomic interaction that's what is the part being discussed here so now we want to discuss propagation of waves uh, via means of atomic vibrations and uh, this is the one case where we are assuming longitudinal waves means okay suppose these are the atomic planes and this set of planes suppose is the reference plane we are saying us initially suppose it is sth plane and u is the um, the displacement for this particular plane and then this is us plus 1 a plane uh, towards right of this reference plane so suppose initially it was at this distance so now you see these dashed lines are actually separated from uh, each other by a constant distance say a all these dashed line this is the reference so all the dashed lines are separated by a distance a from each other so this is a this is also a so this is uh, atoms when they are not at all distorted uh, and they are on their uh, specific equilibrium positions now because of atomic vibrations what may happen that uh, okay one of the plane is so suppose this is the direction of propagation of the wave then the atomic plane is this particular atomic plane is suppose chosen as a reference so we say okay this plane is reference so there is no distortion on this let us say or 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 on this plane the distortion is us but it is taken as reference so what will be the next plane at this will be having a this separate distortion of us plus 1 similarly next to this one is us plus 2 us plus 3 and so on so and similarly us minus 1 so this this is uh, in this case atomic planes are uh, disturbed along same direction as that of k the propagation of the wave so that is why these are this is representing the longitudinal wave similarly you can discuss transverse waves in this manner if k is the propagation vector then if uh, this is sth plane now atomic planes along this direction are not distorted or they are separated by distance a only how they are distorted they are distorted in a direction transverse to k atoms are distorted in a direction transverse to k so that is a transverse mode so here you can notice that okay same notation we are using us suppose is the separation of uh, sth uh, uh, separation of atoms in sth plane or distortion of the atoms in sth plane then s plus 1th plane s plus plus 2th plane and so on so again here you would notice those uh, dash the circles are actually representing the uh, atoms on their uh, undistorted positions and then uh, this is distorted i mean because of atomic vibrations now uh, this is these are two different modes which are possible for atomic vibrations now here what we actually are discussing is trying to discuss the detailed uh, aspect of those atomic vibrations and uh, then how those atomic vibrations can lead to uh, various kinds of properties so we will be here using newtonian equations of motion and what we will keep in mind is that there is only nearest neighbor interaction i mean the atom is interacting to its neighbors only nearest neighbor not next nearest neighbor or next to next nearest neighbor nearest neighbor is usually written as nn nearest neighbor and next to ne next nearest neighbors are written as triple n next nearest neighbors and uh, so on okay so now we assume that the force on the plane s uh, any plane you can pick say suppose reference plane s uh, is caused by the displacement of uh, plane s plus p is proportional to difference this is actually we are using hooke's law right so i mean uh, the 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 force on this plane because of some s plus pth plane so this is general thing s plus pth plane uh, not nearest neighbor thing uh, s plus pth plane there uh, i mean this atom may be interacting with this atom right in general so p will be 2 in this case s plus 3 and so on so the force caused by that s plus pth uh, atomic plane will be us plus p minus us so us is the distortion in this sth uh, uh, atom uh, 
and U S plus U uh, S is the U S plus P is the distortion in S plus P th plane or atom in S plus P th plane, right? So accordingly, what will be the net displacement between the two atoms? This will be U S plus P minus U S, right? So this uh, force is proportional to displacement, isn't it? That's what is the Hooke's law. So that's what we are using here. <laughs> For keeping our life simple, we are using nearest neighbor interaction so that P is plus minus one only. So that total force will be only because of, uh, on, on a sth plane will be only because of S plus one or S minus one. I mean, if we think of this one, so at the force coming on this atom is either because of this atom, the nearest neighbor to the right hand side and this atom, the nearest neighbor to the left hand side. Is this uh, uh, clear? Any question up to this point? Yes, sir. Right. So uh, how, what will be the force given by? So force on sth atom or force on atoms in sth plane will be C, suppose sort of spring constant. So C actually depends upon nature of the bond. This is where the characteristic of the bond is sitting so bond um, which kind of bond it is that will be deciding the value of c the spring constant right so c into so s plus one -th plane what is the force on s -th atom because of uh, s plus one -th, uh, uh, atom uh, or atom in s plus one -th plane that will be u s plus one minus u s so that this will be net displacement between these two. So US is the displacement for this plane. US plus one is the displacement for this plane. Net displacement is US plus one minus US. That is going to give us the net force on this sth uh, uh, atom because of this atom. Similarly, the force coming on this same sth atom because of the uh, the atom sitting to this side s minus one -th, uh, plane will be C into U S minus one minus U S. Uh, you should notice that the signs are taken care here. So here we are taking U S plus one minus U S. Uh, so this force is trying to uh, act like this, right? This force is trying to act along this direction and this force is trying to act along this direction. So this directions are taken care here. Here we have written, uh, uh, I mean, direction, actually, it's nothing like uh, to which side the force is acting. It will depend upon what is US plus one minus US. So what is the net displacement that will decide the sign. So if US plus one is uh, smaller than US, uh, uh, in that case, force will be acting. It will be minus. So it will be left side or in other case, it will be right side because atoms actually are not OK that this will move to this side only they are vibrating that's what we're talking so vibration means this atom can be to this side as well this diagram is taking a single snapshot of what is going on actually atoms are vibrating about their mean position so force is uh, it, it, it depends upon in which direction the force will act right so it depends upon these values of us us minus one and us plus one but this is the general equation okay uh, is that clear <laughs> yes sir okay so uh, if we so so basically what we are using we are not uh, using any quantum mechanics we are using uh, we are treating our system classically till now and uh, assume uh, the trying to understand the atomic vibrations within uh, the uh, newtonian laws of uh, uh, motion right newtonian laws of uh, motion so uh, the this constant c the force constant which we can call is actually uh, depending upon uh, uh, bond strength of course and also this will be different for longitudinal and uh, transverse case why so because in longitudinal the bond is directly stretched you can see bond is directly stretched so c will be probably higher in case of longitudinal case and uh, in case of transverse this will be lower because it is like, okay, stretching the spring along its length or stretching the spring perpendicular to its length. So C 
will will be different for different modes uh, it is uh, convenient in general here so now what we will be doing is we are keeping c and uh, we are not bothering about uh, longitudinal or transverse part we are trying to derive general formalism then accordingly whatever is the case we put the value of c and then obtain the uh, final results yes any question it seems somebody is trying to ask question is it so no fine so this equation of motion will become what uh, we just uh, now substituted force uh, because uh, fs was force acting on atom in sth plane so uh, this will be acceleration m is suppose the mass of uh, the atom in that uh, uh, sth plane so m into a this is acceleration del square u upon dt square so this this became the newtonian equation of motion and what will be the solution for this kind of uh, uh, situation this is a sort of uh, atomic uh, Sir, you are not audible. Vibrating because the system is simple harmonic oscillator kind of system. Uh, atoms are trying to uh, go to their equilibrium position, but then because of their kinetic energy, they may overshoot the equilibrium position, and this keeps on going. so that's a simple harmonic oscillation kind of thing and this is the best mathematical way to represent those uh, time dependent harmonic oscillations so if we use this kind of uh, time dependence uh because us suppose uh, or or what is the meaning of saying this is that us actually has um, two parts one may be space dependent one is time dependent so time dependent part if is this kind then what will happen only this part will give rise to time dependent derivative so this equation can be solved uh directly from this dependence because even if there is some space dependent component that can be taken outside the derivative and that will sit finally in the answer as such so d square u over dt square will actually give this equation now if we substitute this we will find out that okay m omega square u s is equal to this thing right so right hand side is kept as such so now this is a, this equation if you see <coughs> is a finite difference equation i hope you have studied somewhere maybe in numerical uh, analysis or numerical methods course uh, finite difference formula right so uh, this is sort of central difference formula uh, and is representing a second order again derivative it is it is a formula corresponding to second order derivative i hope uh you should be in a position to recall that if not i would recommend you to go to book by uh e bala guru swami numerical methods there you can find out all these finite difference formula in detail well so this is representing sort of space derivative i mean this side was time derivative this this is uh, now this we obtained fine so this is actually representing second order space derivative and uh, this kind of equation will have a solution now this is also a differential equation now in terms of us and this differential equation will have this kind of solution that is us plus minus 1 is equal to u e raised to the power iota s into k a uh, plus e raised to the power uh, plus minus i. i mean this is something like uh, this is s plus minus 1 means 
here you can say e raised to the power iota s plus minus 1 into ka because if you take these common you will find out the same thing but okay we have written it this way why because of some mathematical convenience where k is a wave vector in general and uh, uh, the value of uh, uh, okay the value to use for a will depend upon the direction of k yeah fine what will be the a spacing i mean a spacing is interplanar spacing what is this line saying is that this a will actually depend upon along which direction we are going the thing which i told you in very beginning of the lecture today that if you are taking one zero zero planes the interplanar spacing will be a if you are moving along a uh, sorry one one zero then interplanar spacing is going to be different if you are moving along one 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 direction interplanar spacing will be different if you are moving along say two one three direction interplanar spacing will be accordingly different so we don't have to use the lattice constant but we have to use interplanar spacing uh, so that's what 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 uh, this line actually mean now if we look at these two equations and uh, substitute the value of us plus minus 1 in uh, this equation what we can obtain is uh, equation of this sort you can try this right so if we substitute uh, this us so 1 is 0 so this part won't be there in that case so this will be u into e raised to the power uh, iota s k a that's what is uh, sitting here minus m omega square uh, where is it oh yeah minus m omega square this is u s we put then this is equal to c into u so we now are substitute c and u is going to be common u will be outside so c and u will be common here c into u that's what is done here into e raised to the power iota so this is s plus u s plus one so this will be s plus one k a plus e raised to the power iota s minus one k a sitting here uh, minus two e raised to the power iota uh, s into k a u s uh, i hope that's clear is this clear Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. What, what will happen is that e raised to the power iota s k a can be taken common. So on both sides. So this term will cancel. This cancels uh, this s sitting here, right? Uh, uh, yeah. E raised to the power iota s k a. E raised to the power iota s k a. E raised to the power iota s k a. So this goes with this, right? And even u goes with u, both sides. So what you will be left with is omega square m. The minus is taken to the right hand side here. So omega square m is equal to c minus c into what we are left here finally with e raised to the power iota k a plus e raised to the power minus iota k a this term and minus 2. And uh, if we use uh, this identity, means 2 into cos of theta is equal to e raised to the power iota theta plus e raised to the power minus iota theta. I hope you have done this. These are This comes from uh, uh, Euler identity, right? e raised to the power iota theta is cos of theta plus iota sine theta, right? So if you uh, put the values, so this will be this e raised to the power iota theta will be cos of iota k a plus iota sorry this will be cos of k a plus iota sine k a this will be cos uh, k a minus iota sine k a so iota sine k a will cancel uh, each other one is positive other is negative so finally what we will be left with 2 into cos of k a so if we use that so these first two terms these first two terms will give us what? So this will be like omega square m or m is also taken to the right hand side. So this will be 2 into cos of k a. Uh, so uh, that is uh, a minus is sitting here, right? So that minus is taken common. So a minus is taken common here. So this that is why this uh, 2, 2 is also taken common. So this 2c by m, 2c 
by this m came here a minus already was taken so this will become 1 this is sitting here minus cos of ka this 2 came already outside so this will be left as minus cos of ka uh so this gives or this dependence of omega on uh, uh, this k the wave vector is known as dispersion relation this is this is known as dispersion relation omega versus k i hope you have studied it dispersion relation is very standard thing in waves and optics it is a very standard term means how does omega depend upon k is what is given by dispersion relation so in this context this is representing the dispersion relation for atomic vibrations in a crystal means uh, in case of atomic vibrations how does the omega depend upon k now let us see this thing uh, this is going to be very interesting uh, graphical aspect of this thing and uh, how this is actually related to uh, uh, what you call a uh, brillian zone thing now now we will try to discuss that brillian zone once again idea of brillian zones so that's our uh, dependence of omega on k uh, now uh, what will happen at uh, uh, first brillian zone boundary now we are talking of a specific direction in a crystal right so that can be seen to be like a one dimensional periodic lattice isn't it i mean atomic planes along that particular direction are or can be seen like one dimensional lattice so with the inter uh, planar or inter atomic spacing being a so if inter atomic spacing is a so what will be the brillian zone in that case the boundary of first brillian zone will be pi by a plus side and minus pi by a that is nothing but the wigner sheet cell i hope you remember now that uh, idea uh, let me try to quickly show it uh, here let me write it down maybe that will make it better so it is like okay this is one point sitting here other point sitting here in reciprocal space other point sitting here and so on suppose this is our real space lattice where atoms are separated by a distance a oh sorry atoms are separated by a distance a so what will be the uh, reciprocal space for this case this will be made up of the reciprocal lattice points which will be uh, uh, again linear and uh, the separation of those points is given by 2 pi by a right 2 pi divided by oh sorry oh writing with mouse cursor is very challenging thing anyway 2 pi by a correct so what will be first brillian zone so if we take this to be reference or wigner sheets will be what this is 2 pi by a this length so what we do for wigner sheet cell we bisect this plane and what will be the separation and we also take this side again bisect that's your wigner sheets construction so this will be pi by a because total different total length is 2 pi by a so this will be plus pi by a similarly there will be another thing here called minus pi by a so this is representing the zone boundary that's what we are uh, trying to say here so this is your brillian zone boundary okay is this clear yes sir yes sir yes, okay sir. so uh, the slope of omega versus k will be uh, so what will be the slope of omega versus k this is omega square versus k right 
the 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 slope of omega versus k will be uh okay we have a eraser as well i think can you try to find out the slope okay the slope will be d omega upon dk right if you take the derivative so this will be 2 omega d omega by dk on on uh, left hand side right so right hand side but it will be this will be uh, 2c by m will be constant this first term will be zero 1 minus so this will be cos of uh, k a what will be derivative of this with respect to k this will be sin of k a into a i think because derivative is with respect to k so what will be sin of k a when k is pi by a so that will be sin of pi by a into pi sorry a so this will be sin of pi which will be zero so that's what it mean i mean the slope will be zero slope will be zero for this and this is something really important what is that slope related to d omega upon dk is related to velocity right wave velocity so wave velocity is zero when the wave vector is equal to uh plus minus pi by a means at zone boundaries uh the velocity when the wave vector is equal to pi plus minus pi by a the velocity of such waves will be zero so that's again a kind of uh, interesting thing for uh, oh that is done here fine this is this is what i was trying to say so at k is equal to plus minus pi by a this will be equal to this thing uh, this already discussed will be zero because when you put k is equal to pi by a this will be zero now if you there is some simplification to this right hand side which he has done here so if you use 1 minus cos of theta is equal to 2 into sin square theta by 2 so what will that become this expression actually omega square that will become equal to 4c by m why but what we have done this one 1 minus cos of k a so to that we have used this formula and uh, this formula is giving us this 1 minus i mean 2 into sin square uh, theta by 2 so this is the same thing done here okay so now if we try to see its uh, 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 another form so this is omega square right that is omega square so what will be omega omega will be 4c by m under the root sin of 1 by 2 ka mod of sin uh, ka by 2 if we try to plot these dispersion relations between omega versus k of uh, in say first brillian zone how will that look like now uh, this is uh, shown directly here you can write down any fortran program or this is very simple thing sin of ka this is sin of half into ka so what we are varying varying what we are varying is k k is being varied here because in reciprocal space what is k representing k is representing wave vector so in reciprocal space it is also k k space right so now k is representing wave vector of the wave propagating through the crystal so now you can see that if the wave vector is very small or close to zero uh, omega omega is approaching to zero when k is zero omega is approaching zero and this goes like okay mod of sin of uh, k a by 2 so sin functions maximum value is 1 so 1 means what is this value going up, up to one so this is this thing is not uh, uh, um, i mean this thing is actually 4c by m under the root this is this is taken actually to right hand side here left hand side sorry so this is omega by 4c by m under the root so this and right hand side can be maximum one so that's represented here but this is representing the dispersion omega versus k for uh, uh, a wave propagating in a crystal uh, doesn't matter whether it is longitudinal or transverse where will that longitudinal or transverse nature will come into picture that will come in c 
this C will be actually deciding whether we are talking of longitudinal wave or transverse wave. But the qualitative variation will remain the same. And you can see something interesting that at Brullian zone boundaries, this is called Brullian zone boundary. This one and sorry, this one here. I mean, k is equal to plus minus pi by a. So at Brillian zone boundaries, omega is highest. You can see here highest and you can find out what will be the highest value of omega. That is proportional to, uh, of course, c and m. So omega is directly proportional to c and directly proportional to m, the highest value of omega. And uh, at zone boundary, the rate of change of omega at zone boundaries, the sorry, rate of change of omega here with respect to k is zero. And that is representing the uh, phase velocity. So you can find out what will be the velocity d omega upon dk, d omega, if you plot the velocity. So you can try to take d omega upon dk from here. How will velocity look like? So from here, you can see the velocity is going to be zero at this. That probably is going to look like this. Qualitatively, I'm saying. Quantitatively, you need to check. How will that? Oh, rather, I don't think it is going to be that simple. Because here, there is a change, sudden change. So it, here, the value will be large, I mean, largest. So here, the uh, uh, d omega upon dk, the velocity will be highest. And here, it will be 0. You can plot these graphs for, uh, I mean, this graph is not as per this axis. I am just trying to show you the qualitative thing. You take d omega upon dk this thing will come as a constant uh, right and then uh, take derivative of sine of mod of uh, uh, ka and uh, that will give you a variation i mean you need to check what will be the derivative of this okay i i leave it to you uh, you plot this because it was not given in the book and i didn't plot it exclusively for you so you do it as a small homework that how will the velocity look in the reciprocal space or Brillian zone. Okay. Uh, well, that's all. Uh, I mean, that's all for today. In next class, we shall be talking about, uh, so this was the case for the monoatomic uh, basis. Means our uh, um, number of atoms per lattice points were one. Uh, there were only one kind of atoms having mass M. Now in next class, we will be considering uh, atomic vibrations in uh, lattice having diatomic basis. Suppose we have two kinds of atoms, A type of atom and B type of atom. Then if we have two kinds of atoms, how will these things be affected? So that is what we will be doing. And uh, at the same time, we will also uh, be then in the next classes, rather using these dispersion relations to understand thermal properties, uh, how we can actually calculate specific heat, uh, how does that omega versus k important there. So all that kind of stuff will be coming in the next classes. Uh, well, that's all for today. If there is any question, I will be happy to help. Yes, any question? Any so questions? I have, yeah, I have plotted uh, velocity with respect uh -huh. to k. Hmm. Graph is like inverted parabola. Ah, it will be like inverted parabola, yes, as I told you. But uh -huh. it, it, it depends on a. Hmm. That means uh, velocity is directly proportional to lattice constant. Yeah, but I mean, velocity is directly proportional to lattice constant. Yeah, in, I mean, periodicity will have a role, of course. Uh, that is fine. But then accordingly, your Brillian zone will also change. Na? If A will change, Brillian yes. zone pi by A will also change. Isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Size of the Brillian zone will also change. That's OK. Fine. So that is how the velocity is going to look like. That's perfect. Any other question? Yes.
no if there is no question you quickly sign your attendance and uh, then that's all for today <laughs>